In this video, I'm going to be answering the top 15 questions about schedules in Revit. Let's go. Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. That's where you can find all of my Revit courses. I've got over 140 hours of content and I'm adding more each month. That's where I go and take the extra time to go slowly step by step and explore all of the complex and interesting topics that Revit has. So if you're interested, please check it out. I'm going to link it up just below this video in the description and then also up in the uh, cards above. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit and let's now answer the first question about schedules in Revit, which is, well, how do you create a schedule? So in this case, we're going to be making a room schedule. So for schedules, you just go here to the view tab, then you go to schedules and you just click on schedule quantities. And this is going to take care of most of your scheduling. Uh, now, in this case, we want rooms. So I can just search here for room and here we go, rooms. I can just click on that and that's going to open up the schedule properties. So uh, before you actually create the schedule, you have to uh, pick out which fields you want to include and for rooms, well, area, that makes sense to include. Or we want to include the name and number, for example. So you're just going to click this little arrow to drop it here. And once you have some basic fields, then you can just click OK. And there we go. We have our schedule. OK, so now let's move to question number two, and that's how to add new fields after the schedule has been created. And how can we arrange these fields a little bit better? So let's explore that. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to make sure that I'm here in the schedule view. And then in the properties panel, you're going to get the schedule properties. If I scroll down here under other, we have the fields. And if I just click on edit, it's going to bring up that schedule properties uh, dialog. And then here I can include additional fields. So for example, I want to have the, uh, let's see what I want to include the department. This is one of the fields that I want to use. I want to include the floor finish. That's nice to have. I want the wall finish. Uh, I want to include the level. And then also, let's see, do we have a ceiling finish? We do. So I'm just going to include that as well. Now, once you have all of these fields here, you might want to, well, arrange them differently than they are arranged here. Now, you can do that by using these arrows here. So when you select one of these, you get these arrows. And when you click down, it's going to move that field down. And uh, when you click it and you move it up, it's going to move that field up. So that's basically how it works. So in this case, I want to have my floor finish, wall finish, ceiling finish kind of together. Uh, then I want my schedule to start with the number first, then the name, and then the area, and then I'm happy with the rest of the order. So now I can just click OK. And now we get the extra fields and we also get the kind of the arrangement that we were looking for. Now let's take a look at resizing these columns here. So as you can see, all of these columns have different uh, size and let's say, or actually they're same, I think when it's created, but then you can resize them however you like. Uh, however, I don't like to resize them here in the schedule view. I actually like to place this schedule on a sheet and then we can make some changes because well on the sheet that's how it's going to be represented in reality so that's what we're looking for so what I'll do now is I'm just going to go here to my project browser scroll all the way down and then here I have one empty sheet and I'll just come here to my schedule quantities open up and find my room schedule. And then I'm just going to transfer that here on a sheet and then place it here in a corner. Once we have that, what I'm going to do next is going to undock this whole uh, window. And then I'm just going to dock it over here on the side of the screen. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is, well, I want to have kind of uh, the view of how that's going to look like uh, once it's placed kind of in uh, on a sheet and once it's ready to be printed. Uh, so I like to place it here and now I can play around with my schedule and then I can just unzoom or zoom out of the schedule if I need to by holding the control key and using the scroll wheel. Now keep in mind this is only with the newer versions of Revit. For some reason uh, it wasn't available before. Uh, so anyways what I'm going to do now is I'm going to resize some of these. So what I like to do is I like to resize it in a way so as you can see here where it says ceiling finish, I actually like this to be only one row. So I can actually 
resize it manually here inside of the sheet and it's going to change here so see if I move this it's going to change that so let's just bring it where it should be. Uh, another way to resize uh, your columns uh, is just to click on the column itself and then go here to resize and then you can actually enter a numerical value. So I'm just going to enter 10 millimeters and click OK so it's going to re basically uh, resize that to 10 millimeters and just one thing here uh, we have an issue where the number well it's it's actually three rows for the number and that brings us to our next uh, question about schedules and that's how to change the uh, column names well it's actually as simple as clicking here and then instead of number I'm just going to type in no dot and click and it's going to look like this so it's going to look a little bit cleaner like so. Our next question is how can we group columns? So if we have multiple columns that are essentially talking about a similar thing, we might want to group them. So in this case, we have our floor finish, our wall finish, and our ceiling finish. And let's say we want to group these together. I'm just going to click on one and then drag over to select the rest of them. And then here on titles and headers, we have the group option. And when we click on that, it's going to add another field above that, which is going to group this and we can name it. And I'm just going to uh, type finish. So th these are going to be all of our finishes. Uh, so uh, now it's all grouped together and it looks nice. Now this gives me another issue where I have these names uh, here which are at the bottom and I actually want to kind of have them centered in this field and that brings us to another question and that's how to control the position of text. So what you need to do is you just need to select the fields like we did before. So just you, you click on one and then you drag to select the other ones and then you go here to the appearance uh, tab and then here we have the alignment options so for the vertical alignment I'm just going to place that in the middle and it's going to look like this and then for these two I can do the same thing next question is about fields so what do we do when we have these empty fields and how can we fill them out well you have a couple of options the first option is to find the actual element inside of your model and then fill it out there so in this case if I select the living room I can find my uh, ceiling finish wall finish and so on so here I can just type things out if I want so for example for the wall finish I can just say paint and hit enter and hit apply so now when I go to my room schedule as you can see here the paint will be uh, added here under the living room wall finish another way to do that is to um, uh, go here and uh, just type something out so inside of the schedule itself so here I can say oak flooring hit enter and now it's there. Uh, now in this case as you can see it uh, brought up two rows so we might have to adjust the size here so I might extend this just a little bit like so. Okay so uh, once we have this here uh, now what you'll notice is for the other ones you're going to have that option that you've already placed. So for example if I now go to my bath and for the floor finish I say tile what you'll notice now is for any other one, I'm going to have that oak flooring and tile as options. So you can just select one of them and it's going to be a lot easier for me to uh, fill these out and then uh, just it's just going to be a lot quicker than to have to uh, type things out for each one. Now what you can see is I have filled out the rest of these. Uh, so what you want to do next is I want to remove a uh, room here. So for example, in this case, I've added this shed and let's say that we don't want to include the shed in our room schedule. So how can we remove this field? If I were to just select it and then to try to uh, to, to delete it, uh, it's not actually going to work. It's, it's not that easy. So, so here, as you can see, it just uh, deleted one uh, one letter here or you might actually uh, delete the room and you don't want that you just don't want to show it in this particular uh, schedule so what you can do for that is go here to schedule properties and then find your filters and filters allow to allow you to filter out or filter in certain uh, elements or certain fields in your schedule uh, or rows so here I can just filter by 
In this case, I can filter by whatever I want, but let's go with the name because that's simple. And then I'm going to say name is shed. Okay. And once I click OK, it's going to create that filter. But here now we only have the shed. So what we need to do is go back to filters and then instead of equals, go with does not equal because it's actually just kind of filtering what's being left in the schedule. So everything that doesn't equal shed, it's going to stay there. And now we have a schedule without that shed, uh, but the shed room is still there. It has not been deleted. It has just been removed from uh, this schedule. The next question is, well, how do we sort our schedules? And for that, what we need to do is again, go to our schedule properties and find sorting and grouping. And then here under sorting and grouping, we have to figure out a strategy that we want to use. So in this particular case, I want to divide all of these uh, by uh, first, I want to divide them by a level, but then also all of the non heated rooms, I want to kind of have those at the bottom. So uh, the balconies that we have have. I want those to be separate just because I want to have kind of an, uh, just to know how much of the house is heated and how much isn't. So for that, what we need to do is we actually need to go here to department and I've actually included this field just so I can use it for heated and unheated. So here, what they'll do is I'm just going to say heated. And then uh, what we'll do here is I'm just going to set everything to heated apart from balconies. So everything apart from balconies is going to be heated. And then here I can say not heated or something like that. And I can put that here as well. Okay, so now once we have that department as a value that we can use for sorting, I can go back to sorting and grouping. And then here under sort by, I can say first, I want to sort by level. Uh, then I want to sort by uh, our department. And then finally, let's sort by uh, room numbers. So this is kind of my first setup. So I'm just going to click OK, and then I'm going to see what I get. So here, as you can see, first, we have level one. So that's level one, then we have level two. And then finally, we have the, the balcony, which is not heated. Now, even though this is sorted, and it looks pretty nice, uh, I still don't like the fact that it's it's all together. And you can't really see kind of the, the, the subgroups that we're creating with the sorting. So I'm just going to go back to sorting and grouping. And then what I'm going to include is a header for our levels, I'm going to include the footer, which is going to include the uh, title count and totals, I'm going to include a blank line below that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the department and include the blank line here. So once we have all of this, and I click OK, now you can see that we have a schedule that looks like this, which is now segmented. So first we have our levels here, or level one, then we have our level two. And then finally, we have the balconies that which are on level two, uh, which are here. So everything is kind of separate and grouped. And I like the way that this looks. Now, that brings us to our next question, which is, well, what can we do uh, if we want to uh, hide some of our uh, columns? So in this case, the levels and the department, it actually served its purpose and it gave, uh, gave us this sorting, but we don't really need to see that. I don't need to see this here. I, I don't need to see heated repeated like a million times. I, I don't really care about that that much. So what I can do now is I can go to formatting, open that up. And then for our department, I'm just going to check hidden field and the same thing for level, check hidden field and click OK. And now we have a much smaller schedule here, I can even zoom in a little bit. And we still have here level one and level two, and we still have that this is heated and this is not heated. So we still have that information. However, it looks much cleaner and much nicer. The next question is, how do we calculate totals from our schedules? Well, for that, again, we go here to formatting and then for area, because that's kind of the only thing where we really need uh, our totals. And I can come in here and then I can say instead of no calculation, I'm going to say calculate totals and click OK. And then this is what we have. So now it's calculating totals for all of these. Now I want the kind of the final total count at the bottom for the entire 
house for the entire schedule. So for that, I can go back here to sorting and grouping and then just check grand totals here and click OK. So now it's going to give me a grand total of 139 square meters. And this is our, uh, the, 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 this is basically the totals for the entire house. Okay, now the next question is, how can we adjust the format of the units in our schedules if we don't want it to follow kind of the units that we've used for our project? And we can actually do that by going here to formatting. And in this case, let's go to area. We can go to field format. And here you can either use project settings with this checkbox, or if you uncheck it, now you can change the rounding, for example, to two decimal places. And then we can use this as a symbol, click OK, click OK again. And then this is the result that we have. And as you can see, we have the uh, grand totals. And now we have the, the two decimal places and we're much more accurate like this. The next question is, how do we adjust the line weights for our schedule? So for example, here you can see these are all thin lines and how can we adjust those? Well, we actually have a, a few approaches, so or a couple of approaches. The one is to go here to appearance and then here we can play around with the grid lines, adjust the thickness. We can even add an outline with some wide lines, for example. So that's going to look like this. Actually, I don't really like this. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to to go back and uncheck that. So another thing that you can do for adjusting the, the line thicknesses is to play around with borders. So what you can do is you can select some items like, let's say like this, and then go to borders. And then here you can you have a little bit more adjustment. Now this is a little bit tricky. So I can go here to outside, set that to wide lines, but sometimes it can be a little, okay, there we go. So now we can kind of set it up to this and then you can see that we have wide lines, but they're kind of here and not here on top for some reason. So then if I go here to room schedule and go to borders, I can then go to wide lines outside, click OK. So it's now going to give me that effect. However, if I try to do this for the rest of these, uh, as you can see, we don't really have that option. It's only here for our headers uh, and I don't have that option here. So if you've perhaps figured out a better way to do this, uh, please let me know. Uh, alternatively, you can perhaps just use detail lines here on the sheet, but I don't like that because it's not really a smart solution. It's a very manual and annoying solution. Okay, moving on to next question, and that's how to adjust the font. So for the font, what you can do is you can come here to the schedule, go to appearance, and then here on the appearance tab, we have the font. And these are just the options that we have because of the, uh, these are the text types that we have inside of Revit well, uh, inside of this particular project. Uh, however, if you don't have the font that you want, you can create a new font, uh, but that's kind of a, a whole separate thing and something that I'm going to leave for a different video. But if you want to make just some quick changes to the font, what you can do is you can actually just make a broad selection like this. Oops, can we see? Okay, so you can just kind of start selecting elements in the uh, in the schedule here. And then here you can actually find your own font. So let's try Century Gothic, for example. So if I want to use that, I can use that, make it bold. So there we go. So we can kind of play around here now because of the font, we have to increase this. OK. And yeah, this is what that would look like. So if we try, so sometimes it's hard when you select the fields here, it doesn't want to work. Sometimes it does. So I really find it annoying uh, to adjust the fonts manually, but you can do it uh, like that. And I can do the same thing here for the main one. Uh, let's try again, Century Gothic. And then in this case, I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. So four millimeters high. There we go. So this is basically how you can adjust the font. Next question is how can we change the color? And well, that's again, the same approach. You just make a selection like this, you go to shading, and then you can add whichever color you like. 
you just find it there. I really like to, to make it very light because it is going to be very visible. But yeah, this is the result that we have. And that's pretty much it. So we have answered the top 15 questions for schedules in Revit. Uh, now I'm, I'm going to be making a more kind of a uh, more in-depth video on schedules a bit later on. And if this is something that's interesting to you, please tell me in the comment section below so that I know that there is interest for that video. I hope you have have enjoyed this. If you want to get this Revit project file or get any of my Revit project files, you can find that on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.